we're taking this thing north today. Welcome back to Travel by Turtles. So I don't know if you noticed, but we've been on a roll lately. We hit the Mediterranean area recently in Spain, Portugal, and Morocco. We swam around the Caribbean a couple times, Jamaica, Antigua, DR, that kind of thing. But today, pack your big coats, cause it could be a cold one. We are heading to the world's second largest nation, the world's longest coastline, spanning across six time zones, and they do love them some hockey. Oh, Canada. Fun fact time, Canada became a country in 1867, but it never had its own flag until 1965. 10 provinces, three territories, something about constitutional powers making the difference, but we're not here for all that right now. Today, I've got 10 places, and maybe a few bonuses in good old Canada that have a ridiculous number of landmarks, attractions, and natural landscapes that you would be a fool not to check out. But before we pour this maple syrup, if you enjoy what we're doing here at Travel by Turtles, let us know. A like on the video, share it with your Canadian homies, and subscribe to the channel so you know where we head off to next. Now let's hit the road, eh? Toronto, Canada's largest city. The capital of Ontario sits real pretty on the shore of Lake Ontario as a stunning metropolis of skyscrapers and city hustle housing 6 million people and being one of North America's hubs for major business. This city is known for being a cultural melting pot and shows off its roots and modern inspiration in its many amazing structures and landmarks. It just wouldn't be right if I didn't start with the massive needle sticking out in the Toronto skyline, the CN Tower, 553 meters tall. This observation tower was built in 1976 and held the record for the tallest freestanding structure for about 30 years. After Dubai's Burj Khalifa took the top spot in 2009, they played the game smooth and recertified their Guinness World Records title to the tallest freestanding tower. It still stands to this day. Well played, CN, well played. And remember Drake's album cover? The mini Drake sitting on that thing in the sky? Yeah, that's it. Also in the six is the largest museum in Canada, attracting more than one million people every year. The Royal Ontario Museum, art, world culture, and natural history with exhibits dating back millions of years and spanning several continents are displayed across three floors. Various galleries, ever-changing exhibitions, and a world-renowned collection showcasing some of the greatest finds and treasures the world has seen. A good three to four hours in here will easily leave you feeling much more cultured than usual. Now for all the sports buffs out there, you have to pass by a Toronto Raptors game, a Toronto Blue Jays game, a Toronto Maple Leafs game, and the world-famous Hockey Hall of Fame, home of the Stanley Cup trophy hosting the complete history of the game from its infancy to its current worldwide popularity in a wide variety of equipment and trophy displays, interactive events, and live theater replaying vintage footage from the league's legendary figures. On to our next city, Vancouver. The busy West Coast seaport is home to a beautiful year-round climate, scenic views, and friendly folks. It's considered to be one of the best cities to live in Canada. Stanley Park is one of the coolest looking landscapes in the city. A marvelous green oasis smack dab in the middle of an urban jungle. A 400 hectare national rainforest with kilometers of trail, local wildlife, and beautiful beaches. 200,000 annual visitors. The Stanley Park Railway is an enjoyable quick trip through forest ground on a replica of Canadian Pacific 374 the first transcontinental passenger train to pass through the city in the 1880s. The park itself has plenty areas for picnics, playgrounds, tennis courts, even the pitch and putt for the Sunday golf sesh. Vancouver also prides itself with Canada's first public aquarium and Canada's only dedicated marine mammal facility. The Vancouver Aquarium houses 50,000 aquatic creatures, walruses, sea otters, penguins, and probably half of the ocean are all hanging out in the various pools and exhibits throughout the complex. Once you dry off from petting the stingrays, take the car up the way a bit to Granville Island, a huge sandbar turned into an artsy neighborhood. This spot is home to eateries, breweries, mom and pop shops, and year-round events and festivals. The very small island is famous for the Granville Public Market, a smorgasbord of gourmet food stands, 
fresh produce sellers, and the handy craftsmen. You could take the bridge to get there, but I suggest taking the scenic ferry ride instead and catch a view on the way in and on the way out. And if you have a chance to head up north just a bit, take the squad out to Grouse Mountain, barely 15 minutes from downtown. The land is blessed by beautiful four season weather, which makes any outdoor activity a blast to enjoy. If it's cold when you happen to pass by, of course you have to take up the challenge of the fresh powder with some skiing and snowboarding runs, day or night. That's right, the park stays open until 10 p.m., so you can get a view of downtown Vancouver while you tear up the bunny slopes. Ice skating and sleigh rides are also available if you want to play it a bit safer. And when it's nice and hot outside, get the photo op of the trip with a chairlift ride up the mountain range to view the entire surrounding land. Try your best tiger impression and go around at disc golf, or glide softly 3,000 feet in the air in a paraglider. Or if you want to hit the trails and get the workout you didn't ask for, check out the Grouse Grind. Apparently a favorite with the local folks and the tourists who made it back with their legs still working. Nature's Stairmaster is a 90-minute, calf-burning, thigh-melting, glute-blasting sensation as a great way to get fit and take a great nature selfie. And right before our last city on the list, put in the comments which city you think is next. I'll wait. Okay, time's up. Montreal, the largest city in the Quebec province. See, I remembered. And the second largest city in the nation. Montreal has a rich cultural history and is considered the cultural capital of Canada, with local architecture ranging from French colonial times to Gothic Notre Dame inspiration. Visit the Notre Dame Basilica, Montreal's oldest Catholic church, with the stained glass telling the history of the city, originally constructed in 1656. After, you have to take a leisurely stroll through old Montreal, the historic neighborhood with a pleasant Parisian flair as well as Mount Royal Park, with miles of trails, tree-guided paths, and stunning views of the city. A must-see is the Montreal Botanical Gardens, 75 hectares of thematic greenery and an oasis in the city for over 80 years. And of course, other than a Canadian's game live, your last visit can be to the Montreal Museum of Fine Arts. Located on the historic Golden Square Mile of Sherbrooke Street, Canadian works and international pieces, this museum is the largest in Canada by gallery space. Ooh, those certifications are good. And with that, this bottle of syrup is done. Thank you so much for skating with me today on Travel by Turtles, where I took you to more than 10 awesome places to check out in three different cities in the great nation of Canada. Be sure to check out our other trips here on the channel and stay hip by subscribing so you know exactly when our next adventure drops. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.